with us today. We're going to continue in our series that we just started last week in the book of Colossians. And uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, you can certainly go ahead and turn to that chapter one. We're going to look at verses nine through 11 today. It's important that we, that we are mindful of how we pray for each other. You know, it's, it's an easy thing, again, and, I, and I'll mention this in the message, you know, about just kind of casting that out, letting it be almost a blanket statement, hey, I'm going to pray for you. But, but you know, and again, we, we mean that. There's some sincerity with that. But when we tell somebody, I'm going to pray for, and whatever the need is, you know, we, we, we're then, we're, we're stepping into that personal, that intimate, you know, I, I'm concerned about your health or I'm concerned about your family or whatever. And it's not about being nosy or sticking our nose where it doesn't belong as much as I care. And this is what Paul was talking to in this letter today as we continue, as he's ministering to this group that is ministering to him. We talked about that last week about, you know, he's, he's writing this from jail and He's sharing with them what a blessing they have been to him and their faithfulness and their love for one another and things as such. But he shares today, he says, for this cause, this is verse nine, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, so he goes back to having received the message, we do not cease to pray for you. We don't stop. It's a nonstop prayer. Thing. We don't cease to pray for you and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. I love this passage because Paul here is speaking from his heart. He's, he's speaking something deep. We talked about, again, we talked last week about how this group of believers encouraged Paul. Wouldn't we agree today that we, we all need a good dose of encouragement? We need, to, we need to encourage one another. We need to lift each other up like never before. He, he, he saw their faith through what he heard, the, the reports that were coming back to him. He said, wow. They really got it. This is, I mean, th this is amazing. This is the work that I've been doing. This is the seeds that I've been planting. And, and it's just, it's incredible because it was real. It was real. He revealed to them that he prayed for them, that he was praying for them. And he honestly cared about them. Again, there's a sincerity in words and then there's a disingenuous word. We know when somebody means what they say or not. It, it just becomes evident over time. We just have that level of discernment. He, Paul was letting them know he loved them through Christ. And even while he was not physically able to be with them, because he was busy a little bit right now in jail, but uh, he, he wasn't physically able to be with them, because of their spiritual connection, he rejoiced over the bond that they had together as believers and followers of Christ. He rejoiced over the news that he received about them. But what we see today in this, in this new passage is Paul's prayers. Again, it is easy to say, I'll pray for you. That's very easy to do. You know, because again, we don't necessarily mean it flippantly, but oftentimes it's very easy to just say that and keep walking, right? you know, or, or get a prayer request. Oh yeah, I'll pray for you. And to be honest with you, sometimes we get to it and sometimes we don't. And again, that's, that's not being mean. That's just true. You know, we, we, we just get busy with all kinds. But Paul here takes it to a different level. He is saying, it's easy to say, I'll pray for you, but it's better to say how I will pray for you. Because he's, he's getting specifics here. He's letting them know what's on his heart. So what do we look at this morning is why this is important, why this is important. Paul wanted them to know it wasn't just a blanket statement, that it wasn't just, a, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you. But rather, he's saying, I've got some specific things that I want to pray about for you. In other words, some real points, some true points, some things that I want you to know that's sincerely, deeply on my heart, but that I also know will make your life better. 
Isn't it, isn't it all about wanting to improve things, make things better, or it should be? So, so it's kind of like, well, if you've got a broken foot, that's going to be my focus and not something else. You know, he, Paul is saying, I want to get specific about what's going on, about what's being said in your life. So we look at verse 9, and he lets them know that he's, he's, he's praying for them, but he says, I'm praying for you nonstop without ceasing. That is where my heart is. He wants them to be, he says here, filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now, I want us to think about that. Knowing God's will is vital. It's very important. He was saying to them, I don't want you just aimlessly floating through life. I don't want you just jumping from one thing to the next and trying to figure out what the... I want you to know what God wants for you. Paul here was excited about this community of believers. He, he could have clearly in his heart and because of his concern, he could have been praying for their safety because believers at that time weren't in necessarily a good place. There was still a lot of, still a lot of that going on. He could have prayed that they would have not been persecuted. He could have, he could have prayed for their prosperity or their power or their position, but no, he says, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you that you truly and in fact, be filled with the knowledge of God. Think about that. With the knowledge of God and God's will. How vital is that? These, these are the things that he could have spoken of. This is what he was trying to get them to see because he saw this was very important. Very important. And I believe that that same message is important today, that we know the will of God. Again, we can know all kinds of things. We can certainly be filled with all kinds of knowledge. Some people tell people you're full of stuff, but you know, we, we won't talk about that. But, 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 but here, Paul, Paul is saying to them, I want you to be full of God. I want you to be full of the knowledge of God's will. Because again, when we think of that, what, what are we filled with? And, and while, yes, we can have some fun with that and be co comedy about that, but let's think about it. You know, we can be filled with the world's conditions, but in all honesty, the truth of that depends on the source. You know, wh wh where'd you get that information? It might not be correct. You know, we have all the, the, we've got all kinds of question marks about everything anymore. We could be filled with sports knowledge. You know, we can know who pitched a no-hitter in 1976. We can know who won the Super Bowl in 1982. We can know who hit the longest drive at the Masters in 96. Those are great conversation pieces for all those who know those things, for those who like those things. There's nothing wrong with that. But does it expand our life? Does it make anything any different in our life unless you could win a bet? <laughs> that would be about the only way that it would be of any real value. Here Paul is saying, it's good to know things. You can have business knowledge. You can, man, you can solve equations. You can do all this stuff. But these, while they're good things, being filled with the knowledge of God's will, that'll change your life for now and eternal. That's what's important. There was reports last week of an actor who died over in, while in Florida. And I was reading a little story about that. And, and, and this is why it jumped out, not because of any celebrity. I, it, none of that mattered as much as what this quote was. This quote said, as he was asked some weeks before, as he was talking about another celebrity who had passed away, he said, well, you know, I don't really know what happens at death. I'm not sure that anything does. Paul, in another letter, would say, don't be like those who have no hope. In other words, you can know. You know, we did a memorial here yesterday, and I've done countless hundreds of those over the years. And as I've shared with others and, and different ones over the course of time, there's nothing, while the sorrow and grief never changes, regardless of, of the level of loss, to be able to, to memorialize or, or remember or do whatever in a situation where there's a peace, you just know that everything's been settled with the Lord. It's such a different atmosphere to work in than when you don't know that. And I've been in both. Paul here, Paul here is saying, don't do that. I want you to know the will of God. 
I want you to know. See, there's a lot of things we can think. There's a lot of things we can, eh, maybe. But there's some things we can know. And we can know what God's desire is. And his desire is that none would perish. His desire is that we would join him forever in eternity. And he's made a way for that possible through the finished work of Calvary. He's made that possible. We can know. We can be settled with that one thing. We might not know nothing else. You know, we can be wrong on everything else, but we can know that one thing and it can be all right. Here, Paul is saying to those that he's writing this letter to, he's saying there's nothing more valuable than knowing the will of God because everything, everything else is questionable. Everything else is suspect. Simply being put, he's clearly here saying finding, finding peace with your direction. Now think about that. You know, we have a lot of people that just flounder aimlessly through life, and, and I'm not being critical of anyone, but, but really just never find their way. They just kind of just hop from here to there and whatever the case. Whereas when you've come to peace with who you are, whose you are, and the direction you're going, it makes your life a whole lot different. You know, it just does. And it's not that you enter into the realm of thinking, well, I don't care, or I, I've, I've moved to a different, you know, level of, of non-concern, but I'm okay with me. It's not about being complacent as much as being content. And that's what Paul was talking about when he, find, when he says about finding contentment. I'm going the way that God wants me to go. But in order to know that, I got to know his will, right? I got to understand that. And so what he's saying is when we can live in, especially in our spiritual lives with no doubt that we know what the will of God is, it changes the rest of your lives and it changes everybody's life around you because you become a, a central point of, okay, they got it together. I probably need to go talk to them. It's not that we've reached perfection, but we just reach a different place. He's telling them, that's what I want you to be filled with. That's what I'm praying for you about. Because once you know that, once you grasp that, then you can move forward and you can keep moving forward. You don't have to keep saying, well, I don't know. And then you kind of all over the place. No, no, I know that part. I know without a doubt that is where I'm going. He moves on in verse 10 and he says, that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Now, I want us to think about that word for a minute. Knowing how to walk is vital, okay? Now, yes, we can think, okay, putting one foot in front of the other, but we're not talking about the actual physical side of it as much as the spiritual side here because what he's, what he's saying here is walk worthy. There's, there's, there's a difference when he adds that word in there. He's speaking of if you understand the will of God, if you understand who you are in Christ, the manner that you walk that out before others is important. In other words, it's not just a title that you carry. It's not just a, 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 a you know, some kind of precursor to your name. To, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm this or I'm that. No, you don't have to announce it. You walk in such a manner, you carry yourself in such a manner, everybody just knows. It's just clear. You don't have to have the hat and the T-shirt. Everybody just knows there's something different about that lady. There's something different about that man. He says, walk worthy of the Lord. Spiritual understanding teaches us how to walk worthy of the Lord. Worthy. What does that even mean? Well, the word itself means having value, having useful qualities. How does, that, how does that apply to our walk with the Lord? Well, the bottom line is, is it visible? Can it be seen? You know, there, there's a lot of secret agent believers, you know, but that's not what God's looking for. Now, he's, again, he's not talking about moving into a place to where you become so, so spiritual and so high and mighty that you can't have a conversation without quoting scripture and trying to anoint people with oil. I mean, he's not talking about that, you know, that's fine. But, he, but he's saying, show me, does my character show? You know, with Paul, I'm falling apart here. Uh, as, as, Paul, as Paul talks about, you know, and writes later, in Galatians with the fruit of the spirit, you know, and, and speaking of kindness and forgiveness and grace and mercy, the Lord here is saying, 
And Paul, Paul is, is speaking through this. Is that visible? Can that be seen? Because when we think of uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, when we think of a literal fruit tree, it's visible, right? You can see the apples hanging on the limb. You can see the whatever. You can see it there. Well, those things, love and forgiveness and kindness, those are visible as well. You can see whether it's there or not. That's not a hidden quality. Is it real? Is it walked outwardly? Is it visible in our lives? Now, again, I'm not, I'm not speaking of the dress or the miracles when Jesus is saying, let me, others see me in you. We're not talking about trying to emulate that and do miracles, but rather, again, he's speaking of character, kindness and love and forgiveness. Our literal walk is visible. Think about this for a minute. When you see one another walk, we can see things in that walk. Sometimes we can see pain. Sometimes we can see struggle. Sometimes it makes us want to ask, are you okay? You know, you don't look well today. Our walk shows so many things physically because oftentimes the things that are there, they actually can't be hidden. You know, if, you, if, you've, got a, if you've got a hip problem or if you've got this, that, sometimes you can't really hide that because it's just going to be there. You know, it's like some young people asked me not long ago, they said, Pastor, are you hip? I said, no, mine hurts. That's about the only thing that I know about that. But, but, when, we, <laughs> but when we think about things that we, you, you just can't be hidden, the same can be said, the same can be said for our faith. The same can be said about our relationship with Christ. When it's there, it can be seen. You can't really hide it because it just comes out. And that's what Paul is saying. I'm praying nonstop that that is who you are. You know, that is who you are, that we can see it. Paul says, I'm praying that you understand and that you know the will of God deeper. I'm praying that your walk is visible, that it will be seen, that it will reflect the knowledge that you've been given. In other words, don't let it be a secret. You know, we've got plenty of things in our life we'd rather not everybody know. Everybody's got those, okay? This should not be one of them. This is not something we should ever be ashamed of. The Lord addresses that. He said, because if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Nobody wants that. Nobody should ever want that. You know, and again, I've heard different things over the years. You know, I remember, I remember hearing this guy give a speech one time about his great level of faith and all this other stuff. And you could tell he really wasn't being honest, if I'm just being real true with you, because, because he followed up by saying, but that's a private matter. I don't wear it on my sleeve. Nobody knows about it. That's not real. You know, most things that we try to hide that we don't want anybody to know is something we're ashamed of, right? Something we're embarrassed about or, or whatever, Jesus shouldn't be one of them. And that's what Paul is trying here. He's trying to make sure. He said, you're on the right track, but my continual prayers for you is you know the will of God, you know the direction you're going, you know how to get there, and that you let him be seen in everything that you do. Let it be visible because when we walk worthy of the Lord, we are continually planting seeds of knowledge. When, we're, when, we're, when we come through a place when we do this or do that and, and, and people can say, wait a minute, there was something unique about something that you said. Or there was something unique I, I, I experienced just in your presence and your character. There's just something different. Maybe we should talk sometime. I'm kind of going through some things. You know, there's, and I'm, I'm just fortunate in, in my life. I've gotten to know a lot of people from all different walks of life and I can't tell you what a blessing it is to get phone calls or, or messages or whatever from different people that I don't see physically that live in other states, different stuff to say, I think I can talk to you. I really need some help with this. I'm going through some things and maybe they've heard a show that I've done or they've, they've, they've heard something somewhere and it's just an amazing thing to get those kind of connections. Not, be, not because of any any notoriety or anything like that, but because I said, wait a minute, that, that person really actually cares. There's something about their character that says they would talk to me. It's just the great, one of the greater parts of my, one of the greater parts of my week whenever I, whenever I get those moments. Paul here, he lets them know that he prayed for them. And as we look at 
verse 10, he continues on and he says, I want you to be, you know, walk worthy, walk worthy of the Lord that you would understand and be fruitful in every work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now think about that for a minute. He says, I want to pray that you increase in the knowledge of God. Then I want you to be strengthened and have patience and find joy. We live in a time to where I think we can easily and almost, you know, uh, unanimously say that our current climate can test our patience just a little bit. Our current climate can really cause us to have a lot of questions about a lot of things and just kind of get upended about life in general. Paul here is saying, and I believe that it is the Lord's will as well, hang on. I want you to have patience. But really what he says, I want you to exercise them because as we were created in the image of God, we were given the tools we needed right from the very beginning. Oftentimes we just don't use them. You know, it's like I put out a little thing earlier this week. A lot of people think that the world is, is getting darker and darker and, 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 and worse. And in some cases that's true. But do we consider, do we consider that much of it is because those who have the gift of the light never turn it on? Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Paul is saying here, walk worthy of the Lord. Know his will. But I want you to know him. This goes back to relationship. You see, truly knowing God well is important. That is why Christ came. So, Because he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. This is what this relationship is all about. See, this is why this is so important. Paul here, he began by speaking of the will of God. And then he, and then he gets into the personal side that he desires that they would know God, not just about God. I've heard multitudes of people over the course of the years, oh, I believe in God. But not one thing in their life reflects a relationship. And, you know, there's a lot of things we can acknowledge. I believe that pew is sitting there, you know? Okay, that's, it's there. It doesn't change anything, you know? I believe that I left my shirt at home this morning and had to go to Walmart and get a different one, okay? You know, I, I know that's true too. There's a lot of things I believe, but it doesn't change your life. It doesn't. A lot of people have that surface thing. Oh, yeah, I believe in God. Believing in the existence of something and allowing it to change your life is two completely different things. Completely different things. And this is what Paul says, I want you to know God. Because he had a very personal experience on the Damascus Road. He knew without a doubt who God was. He knew without a doubt the voice of God. He knew without a doubt the reality of that. And what he was trying to, trying to give over to them was, I want you to know this too. This is so important. It'll change your life. Again, knowing about God, that surface thing, but no depth. The, the, the staying in the kiddie pool forever and never, ever getting down to the deep end, okay? The most you can do down there is splash, you know? And, and, and just, just enough to get you, just enough to get the bottom of your legs wet. That's it, you know? A couple of steps and walk through the sunshine, you'd be dried right back off. Didn't change a thing. Paul is saying here, you gotta know more. Oftentimes in church culture, we hear phrases like personal relationship with Christ. We've, we've heard that. Most of us have heard that at some point in time in our life. But this, this refers so many times, and again, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't demean this by any means, but oftentimes that, that actually just refers to someone coming to the altar or repeating a prayer or whatever. But knowing the one that we're committing to is so much more important knowing what we're actually signing up for. And that requires knowing who you're talking about, knowing what you're getting into, because typically, typically, and I know they have reality shows about this, but typically you wouldn't marry someone you just met. That wouldn't be a wise thing to do. That wouldn't be a wise thing at all. Personal relationships take time. They take desire. They take willingness to grow together. In other words, many say, many say, I believe in God. But the real question is, 
do you know him? Because that's two different things. That's, you know, to, to acknowledge a creator, to acknowledge a higher being, all those different things, whatever you want to call, but to say, no, I, I know who he is. I know him because he knows my name. He can call me and I know his voice. I mean, that's so much more powerful and so much more life altering. In other words, I know his desires. He wants to spend eternity with me. I know his character. He loves me. I know his level of love. I know his expectations. All of this is found in the person of Christ. That's why he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I've come to show you what this looks like. So it, walking it out, again, Paul speaking about walking, Jesus walked it out before us. In other words, what he was saying was this, I am your example. This was what Jesus was letting everybody know. I am your example. Follow me. That's why he could say that, because he's the only one that knew where he was going, you know? Everything else is like, well, I don't know. That guy, he might know the way, but I'm not sure. He looks a little shady, you know? I mean, you know, you pull into a town you've never been in, and you pull up to us. well, back in the day, you could pull up to a gas station, and there were attendants and different ones there, and you ask them how to get somewhere. You know, and now everybody, of course, just uses GPS. But Jesus says the GPS will get you lost too, believe it or not. But that's a whole other message. Paul said here, I really want you to know him. I really really want you to know him like I do. And so as he prayed for others, can we see, can we see that love and compassion and heartfelt desire of what Paul was thinking, why this was so important, how we pray for one another? Because you see, friends, he saw value in every soul. It's hard to do that sometimes because, because of the outward character of some that seem unapproachable, maybe even some that doesn't seem very nice, some that even seem mean and hateful. But Paul says there's value in every soul because that's what God says. I desire that none should perish, even the vilest offender, the wickedest of all. You know, sometimes today it's easy to get discouraged with people in high places but I would encourage, and I struggled with this years ago, uh, but someone challenged me on praying, praying for such. And I, I would struggle with that, but God has really challenged me with that over the last several years because, and I thought about it from an entirely different perspective. Can we think for just a moment, people in high places that are doing horrible things, make horrible decisions, but we pray for them even still because the change that they could make with their platform if they gave their heart to Christ would be enormous. Doors that would open that we can't just simply because of the platform. Paul here is speaking. Paul here is speaking to the hearts of those that are there. He had come himself to a knowledge of God and he desired that everyone would have that same peace. Can we picture for just a moment that in our minds to, to look at the, the process of the change that would take place in our communities, in our societies, in our churches, in our families, if we prayed for one another in this manner, if we really were considering and thinking about, I really want you to know God. I want you to know the will of God. I want you to walk worthy of God. It would be, it would truly be the literal picture of what Louis Armstrong said that he wanted. A wonderful world. A wonderful world. How do you pray for others? Are these prayers that we lift up, are they for temporary trinkets? Are they for moments? Are they for situations? Or are they for eternal matters? Friends, may we truly care. May we truly care about the will of God, truly care about walking worthy of God and truly knowing God in a personal way in an intimate way. Praying for others. Friends, what we say and what we lift up really matters. It truly does. And I believe that was all.